Welcome to another Top Grades Made Easy video. And I have with me, for those of you who've been following me, the wonderful first rate tutor. We're gonna take you through question three and we're gonna show you five ways to get full marks on question three of paper one. So let's start off with this brilliant technique at the beginning. In your first paragraph, you want to write about the beginning and the ending. There are lots of reasons for this. The most important is when you look at the beginning to the end, you're telling the examiner that you're looking at the whole text. Mm -hmm. You'll also notice a change by the end to the beginning. So it's easy to write about the effect of that. So always do that first paragraph, beginning and end. And then if you run out of time during that question, you will still have banked loads of marks. Okay. What's the next technique? Definitely the next technique is the use, the writer's use of time as a structural feature. This is a really, really powerful technique that writers tend to use and it's often overlooked by students within language paper one inserts. Always find if there's any reference to any particular time, right? So for example, if there's 10 a.m., 11 a.m., etc. But also if there's reference to morning versus evening, yesterday versus today, all of that is the writer's use of time as a structural feature. This is a technique that's incredibly powerful to include in your question number three response. And of course, what maybe you can make the argument for is perhaps how this is making us feel as readers, as if we're hurtling forward. Maybe sometimes also time is used to slow down the pace of the text. It's such a powerful technique that if you pick up on it, Again, you're setting your essay really, really apart from the majority of student responses, okay? So it'll be the third technique. So the next one, you might not get this every time, but you probably will get one of these, is flashback and flash forward. Writers do this to give you an insight into the character, especially flashback, so that's the effect you're gonna write about. And when they flash forward, they're giving you a clue as to what's going to happen to that character in the future. And it's usually going to be a contrast to what's happening in the actual moment that you're studying in the exam. So it's easy to write about the effect. And could flashbacks, for example, flash forwards, could you maybe tie that in with even foreshadowing? So is that technique that's used by writers to engage readers because it's perhaps foreshadowing something that might happen? Yes, foreshadowing is actually probably a better word than flash forward. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now your fourth technique to include in any question number three response is zooming in or zooming out, okay? Hopefully you can see it here, zooming in, zooming out. When the writer focuses in on one particular object or one particular person, gives you lots of color, lots of imagery and lots of detail, they are zooming in. Comment on that. Or for instance, if the writer pans out, talking about the setting, talking about, for example, you know, the sky around this house, telling you what's going on, say for instance, around a house or around an object, they are zooming out. That is powerful structure to include, and of course this is supposed to engage us, make us curious as readers for question number three. So what would be the fifth and final technique? So our fifth one, I've actually got two together. Contrast first. All texts are structured around contrast because they create tension either between characters or between our expectations about what the character expects and what we expect. So commenting on the contrast is an easy way to get into the effect on the reader. And then the final one is a circular structure. Now, most writers don't think about having a circular structure, but the examiners are obsessed with it. And so they'll almost definitely find a source that does have a circular structure, which brings us back to our point number one. The ending is always going to refer back to something in the beginning, and it's easy to say why the author's done that when you reference the circular structure. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And don't forget that on First Rate Tutors channel, we have gone over the three main things you must include in question number two, which is the language question in language paper one. So thanks so much, guys, for listening.